Hello and welcome again from the beautiful Principality of Monaco. It is Tuesday, 15th June, to, and today we are going to talk some uncommon sense about the world's oil reserves and the very alarming and very important fact that the world has much, much less oil left than most people appreciate. In my first video for this channel, I said that I advocate an investment approach based on four guiding principles. Truth, strategy, discipline, and patience. And I explained that by truth I meant true knowledge, information that is true and relevant, which is in itself a challenge since every day we're swamped with information nearly 24-7, and much of that information is biased, distorted, and untrue. Well, today we shine the spotlight on global oil reserves, but especially Saudi reserves, and this is because Saudi Arabia has long had the status of the world's most important swing oil producer capable of expanding or reducing production at the flick of a switch as it suits the requirements of the global economy or the kingdom's own interests. Last week the Visual Capitalists put together another one of their famous infographics, this time about the oil reserves of different nations. As usual, the people at Visual Capitalist make nice-looking infographics, except that their data is often questionable. This recent infographic again perpetuates the myth about Saudi Arabia's inexhaustible oil reserves, which allegedly amount to 291 billion barrels. The Visual Capitalist got those figures from BP's annual statistical review of energy, so nothing controversial there. Oil reverse are tallied up in detail, black and white, and it is just one of those things that almost everybody knows. Almost everybody knows it, and almost everybody is wrong. When I started working as an oil market analyst in 1996, 25 years ago, Saudi oil reserves were pegged at 260 billion barrels, 31 billion barrels less than BP and the visual capitalists say that they are today. In spite of the fact that the kingdom produces about 3 billion barrels each year, these reserves had uh, never had a corresponding decline. To the contrary, with time they only grew, and very few people seem inclined to question those figures. The industry often tries to justify them as the result of technological innovations, which have supposedly improved the industry's efficacy of oil extractions. But when the peak oil hypothesis re-emerged around 2006, I made an effort to try and disentangle the mystery of Saudi oil reserves. Here's what we know. The last time Saudi oil reserves were officially audited in accordance with the so-called proven reserves method, as required by the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, that was in 1979. Based on that audit, Saudi Aramco's managers reported to the U.S. Uh, Senate investigators that the kingdom had 110 billion barrels of proven oil reserves, another 67 billion barrels of uh, probable oil reserves, and 69 billion barrels of possible oil reserves. The reserves are classi classified as proven if there is 90% or higher confidence of them being recoverable with existing technologies and under current economic and political conditions. They are probable if there's a 50% confidence of them being recoverable and for possible reserve there has to be at least 10% confidence that they can be recovered under existing conditions and with the currently available technologies. According to the last independent audit, Saudi Arabia's total proven, probable and possible reserves amounted to 246 billion barrels. So that was in 1979. In 1980, the management of Saudi Aramco uh, passed from the Americans to Saudi Petroleum Ministry, and from that time, no independent audits were done. All the same, the oil reserve numbers evolved. By 1989, they jumped to 260 billion barrels, even though no major new oil fields were discovered. That figure, 260 billion barrels, has been reported over the following 30 years, frozen in time. In a 2016 Reuters article, John Kemp mused on this miracle. He said that if the government data is uh, accurate, the kingdom has managed the remarkable feat of exactly replacing each produced barrel with new discoveries or increased estimates of the amount recoverable from the existing fields. Well, that government data is problematic on at least two counts. First, since 1982, the Saudis have withheld their production well data and the detailed information about their reserves, so there is no way to independently verify their claims. 
Second, Saudi Arabia has already extracted more than 123 billion barrels since 1979, which would mean that their reserves of high-grade easy oil could be entirely depleted. In spite of all this, uh, in 2018, Saudi reserves jumped again, this time close to 300 billion barrels. We'll discuss where this new oil bonanza came from in a minute, but let's first look at some information that's recently emerged from uh, several sources and which corroborates serious concerns about the kingdom's reserves. Already in 2011, WikiLeaks published a number of confidential US embassy cables from Riyadh that cast serious doubts about Saudi uh, reserves and production capabilities. A cable from 2007 summarized the US Consul General's meetings with Mr. Sadad Al Husseini, who was Aramco's Executive Vice President for Exploration from 1992 until 2004. And according to that cable, Mr. Husseini said that in 2007, Saudi Arabia had 64 and not 260 billion barrels of remaining oil reserves and that these reserves would last only until about 2021, after which Saudi output would enter a period of steady decline that no amount of effort could stop. Well, it is 2021 today, so the kingdom may well be in that terminal decline already. According to the same 2007 cables, Mr. Husseini also pointed out that Saudi Aramco wanted to increase production to 12.5 million barrels per day by 2009. However, in spite of a massive $50 billion investment in expanding production, and in spite of quintupling the rig count from 15 rigs they operated during the 1990s to 80 rigs in 2015, Aramco never came close to that 12.5 million bar barrels per day objective. All this was further corroborated in a 2012 report by Citigroup, which concluded that failing to discover major oil, new oil fields, Saudi Arabia might cease to export oil altogether by 2030, which is only eight and a half years from now. So we had multiple high-level sources provide credible information that Saudi Arabia is facing serious challenges with their oil production and that her reserves are nearing the point of exhaustion. This should cause serious alarm in the global markets, but because Western media invariably give Saudi officials a pass, some of these officials ventured in time to make even bolder uh, boasts about the kingdom's oil wealth. In 2014, they alleged that they had 790 billion barrels of oil resource and that this figure should grow to 900 billion barrels by 2025. Now, for casual observers and headline readers, this might be confounding, and the financial press only makes things worse with habitually loose reporting of facts and even, even looser use of terminology. It is indeed linguistic and not technological innovations that are behind these miraculous figures. For example, the press is quite cavalier about using the word proven, where the proven, probable and possible reserves suddenly all get lumped together as proven reserves. They also use the terms reserves and resources interchangeably as if they refer to one and the same thing. It is, however, critical to discern between the two. The term resources comprises oil from contingent and prospective resources, including quantities that are potentially recoverable as of, from as of yet undiscovered accumulations. So let's stop and think about that one. Oil resources include quantities from, as of yet, undiscovered deposits. In other words, we're analyzing the world's largest and strategically most important market based on figures that are by their very definition wide open to exaggeration and wishful thinking. Furthermore, the very term recoverable or potentially recoverable is problematic. This is not the same as feasibly or economically recoverable, which would imply that the value of extracted oil should cover the cost of exploration, drilling, extraction, transportation, and a certain return on invested capital. What we have traditionally understood as reserves usually represents only a small fraction of resources that can be feasibly developed. Incidentally, oil reserve figures presented by Oxford University's website Our World in Data hit much closer to reality. They say that in 2019, Saudi Arabia had only 40.88 billion barrels of oil reserves. You might wonder how Oxford arrived at that figure, but if you guess that they did so through more diligent research, you'd be wrong. Like almost everyone else, Oxford relied on the same BP statistics 
except that they reported metric tons as barrels, which represents BP's figures by a factor of 7.3. And this is a shocking fail for such a respected institution of higher learning. But for our purposes here, that should be a reminder and a warning to always be very careful with the information we get because much of it will prove to be outright junk, even if it's published by respectable institutions. Anyhow, returning to the Saudi oil reserves, two years ago we had another unpleasant revelation about the kingdom's oil production when Aramco tapped Western credit markets for a bond issue. In 2019, they published their bond prospectus, which disclosed that their largest oil field, Gawar, was producing 3.8 million barrels per day and not 5.8 million barrels per day, as everybody knew until then. Two million barrels per day seemingly vanished without any explanation. Given that Gawar accounts for about half of the kingdom's oil production and supplies more than 5% of global oil demand, this should have been a bombshell news. But the media made little mention of it and the markets almost entirely ignored it. Eventually, however, the reality will inevitably catch up and humanity will face a severe and irre irreversible energy crisis. One of these effects will be much, much higher oil prices in the future. How much higher and how far in the future, nobody knows. But what we do know is that such large scale price changes always emerge as trends and span a sustained period of time that should last months and years. As that process unfolds, the most reliable way for traders and hedgers to navigate the oncoming events is through systematic trend following. If you wish to learn more about this strategy, please visit my website, iSystem Trend Following, where you can also request a one month free trial of our daily trend compass reports that covers over 200 different financial and commodity markets including crude oil and oil derivatives. I expect that I'll be posting my next video in a short few days. And so uh, please stay tuned, subscribe to the Markets, Trends and Profits channel, and please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you, and I'll see you soon. So a little while after I recorded the previous part of this video, it occurred to me that everything I said in it, every point of substance, I could have said two years ago. In fact, that's when I first published these materials in a report I wrote for the then president of Croatia, Kolinda Grabar Kitarovic, and uh, that was on the occasion of her keynote speech at the Energy Security Conference that was being held here in Monaco in June 2019. So pretty much everything we know about Saudi oil reserves now, we knew then, and the implications were the same, that we are headed towards a severe energy crisis in the future, and that oil prices will eventually go much, much higher. But in light of that, consider what had happened in the last two years. In the beginning of last year, 2020, oil prices collapsed by almost 80%, an event that nobody could have predicted. Indeed, markets are unpredictable, and even if we can clearly see what's coming in the future, the price trajectory will likely be all over the place. To navigate that turbulence, do use trend following. You can start by subscribing to my daily Trend Compass report. It's based on the I system, which has proven very effective at capturing profits from these price events for nearly 20 years now. The test drive is free for one month. Anyway, that concludes today's video. And remember, truth, strategy, patience, discipline. Onwards and upwards, thumbs up, and I'll see you soon.